I'm Herb Silverman. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm a retired math professor, and I'm openly secular. Well, it started as a child. I was born uh, in an Orthodox Jewish family, and I went to Hebrew school and believed for a while, I suppose, until we were encouraged to ask questions in Hebrew school, and I didn't get a good answer for uh, who created God. But I had more and more questions. I got interested in mathematics and logic when I was young and decided to just do the things within Judaism that seem reasonable, like ethical values, and got rid of some of the rituals. And pretty soon God went as well because there was no logical reason to believe in the kind of deity I was taught to believe in. Well, mostly living in Philadelphia and then going to graduate school in New York and living in Massachusetts, I wasn't trying to hide atheism, but it was not a big deal. For a lot of people in my academic community, I assumed that that was the default position. But when I moved to South Carolina, pretty much the first question they would ask is, what church do you go to? And I'd be open and say, uh, I'm an atheist. I don't go to any church. Some people kind of backed off from me there, but not within my academic community. But mostly I was still uh, quiet about it because it was not a big deal to me being an atheist at the time. I learned on one particular day that it was a big deal, and that's when a colleague of mine at the College of Charleston pointed out that our state constitution prohibited atheists from holding uh, office. And I went to the ACLU then to see what can be done about this obviously unconstitutional provision. And he told me that I would have to challenge it legally by uh, running for office. And he asked me if I'd be willing to run for governor of South Carolina uh, as a constitutional challenge. After thinking about it for a while, I, sounded silly initially, but then I decided, yeah, this is important enough that I agreed to run as governor, as the candidate without a prayer. After I ran for governor, uh, the court uh, decision at that time was that the judge would only rule on its merits if I won the election. Incidentally, this judge was appointed uh, on the recommendation of our Senator Strom Thurmond, which says something about the, where the judge stood. But then I found out I was ineligible for any public office, so I applied to become a notary public and was rejected there. And in a deposition, I found out that there had been over 33,000 applicants in that period that I was contesting it and that I was the only one rejected. As far as I know, the only one in the history of South Carolina. So we had a much better case then and there were a variety of appeals that I won until in eight years after I ran for governor, I won a unanimous decision in the South Carolina Supreme Court saying that uh, there is no religious test for public office, even though the South Carolina Constitution said there was. So after winning in the Supreme Court, now uh, atheists are allowed to hold public office in South Carolina. Our next step is winning elections. There's a, a misconception that if we don't believe in God, we must be somehow inherently evil. Uh, and some people had asked me, well, since you don't believe in God, does that mean you feel free to go out and rape and murder and do whatever you think you could get away with? Usually my response to such questions is with an attitude like that, I hope you continue to believe in a God. But most people eventually recognize uh, that they're not just doing the right thing because of fear of punishment in an afterlife, and we have a lot in common. We just happen not to believe in any gods, 
and being good without God is what we're about. Yeah.